Good morning. This is Jim Ray with the uh, Roads of the Autry Masters. I am here with Masters of the American West artist Joshua LaRock. Uh, welcome, Josh. How are you doing this morning? Hey, Jim. Thanks for having me. Doing well. So uh, where are you physically located? Um, yeah. So I find myself in Maine nowadays, South Portland, Maine. That's where my wife is from. Um, I'm originally from Texas. All my family's down there um, in the sort of Houston, uh, Houston region. Um, wow. But yeah, so I grew up in Houston as well. So maybe we'll talk about that someday. Sure, yeah. Um, so you're you're kind of a classically trained artist uh, in a nutshell. Give me a little bit about uh, what's the story about your artistic upbringing? Yeah, well, so I, um, I kind of had a circular path uh, into a full time uh, career as an artist. Uh, I got my my degree in music business. So I was, I was a musician for a while, then I kind of transitioned to the business side. Um, I had, I, my dad drew and painted growing up more sort of as a hobby. Uh, so it was around, it was all around and I had, I had kind of dabbled with it in high school and college, but uh, for whatever reason was more interested in, in music or I just didn't see, uh, I didn't know that art was a viable career at the time. Um, and then when I was in college, uh, around my, my junior or senior year, I became aware of these, uh, these ateliers. So it was a movement of small art schools uh, taught by master artists, and, but they were training artists in, in kind of the European academic tradition, meaning it's, it's very figurative based. We're drawing and painting from the model, uh, plaster casts, things like that. Um, and I, I just had no idea this stuff existed. So there were a handful of them in the US on the East Coast uh, at the time, this was early, you know, 2005, 2006. And there's, there were some schools in Italy. I couldn't go to the schools in Italy because I couldn't figure out how to pay for it as much as I would like to have gone there. Um, and so I landed in New York uh, where I studied with Jacob Collins. Um, and he, he had a small school that grew into a slightly larger school. By larger, I mean, you know, 40 to 50 students, uh, which is now the Grand Central Atelier. Uh, but so I studied there for three years um, and it just clicked. And then from there, I was, I was doing portraiture, I was doing a lot of portraiture. I would do uh, work, gallery work, uh, figurative, you know, mostly in what, what they call contemporary realism, uh, most commonly, but it's figurative work and things like that. So, so yeah. um, from there, it's, um, I don't know, a small step, a not so small step into the world of Western art. How did, uh, how did that come about? Well, again, so it's another, it was kind of another one of those discoveries for me, maybe five years ago or so. Um, I, I discovered it by teaching uh, at the Scottsdale Artist School okay. um, uh, out there, obviously in Scottsdale, and um, happened to have my, my workshop scheduled for, uh, at the same weekend as the Scottsdale Art Auction. And I walked into there in their pew preview and just was blown away, not only by the amount of art that was being created today by contemporary artists, but also artists, um, you know, from the late 19th century. And they had, they had actually had similar backgrounds to me. The, I'm talking about the Tao Society of Artists, guys. Sure. Uh, right. House and Sharp in particular, they studied with Bouguereau, who was a, was a uh, French painter in the last, the latter part of the 19th century uh, in Paris. And then they brought those skills right. uh, to Taos and the American subject matter. So I was just really inspired um, uh, total revelation for me. And uh, I thought, well, you know, I need to give this a shot. So you're now in the, the Masters of the American West. What other big shows are you in? Well, so I did the Briscoe uh, this, last, this last spring. Um, uh, so those are the, those are the two uh, major museum shows. And then I work uh, closely with uh, Maxwell Alexander Gallery. Uh, and I've done two, uh, two solo shows with them. Good. So uh, you, you've achieved um, uh, a fair amount of claim being in these uh, two very significant Western art shows. You, you were on the cover of uh, Western Art Collector uh, in the run up to, to the Masters. How, yeah. how does that feel? I mean, it's been amazing. I, you know, um, obviously, I'm happy anytime my art is, uh, my work is well received. Um, but I mean, it's just, there's nothing quite like the Western uh, market, the Western environment. And I've just been, uh, you know, super excited to be a part of it, to be a part of the, uh, you know, the Autry show, 
um, and, and then to you know interact with with the magazines and people are so enthusiastic uh, about the subject matter. Um, so when you're when you're looking at at the uh, the master show at the night of the artist over at the Briscoe, what's yeah. your thought process when you're thinking about uh, what what do you want to try to present at those shows? You know, it's um, it, it really just depends on each piece. I you know I have kind of a handful of different ideas that are sort of floating around uh, in my hat, my head. Uh, and then I have uh, my reference material, uh, largely, uh, you know, photo references and, and kind of notes and things from my, my various travels around the West. Some, some ideas and time of, whether it's time of day or pose. And then uh, as I'm going through my reference material, something will strike me about a particular pose. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll kind of build build the, the piece around that. So the piece behind me here, this is, I've just uh, just started this one. And uh, really what happened is this, this, it's just this magnificent horse that I had uh, the pleasure of spending an afternoon with, and obviously uh, the cowboy as well. Um, but he just has this incredibly muscular shoulder and the way the light was hitting it, I just, I had to, I had to paint it. So I, that was kind of the, the, the seed that has, is blossoming into this work. Um, and, and, you know, so then I figured out the background and I changed some things about uh, the writer and so forth, but. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to mention this artist's name. He's a good friend of mine and he's, he's a landscape artist. And uh, when he was younger, he was um, laid up in bed with um, a broken leg or, or something. He was laid up in bed for quite a yeah. while. And um, his father was a, was a rancher and he thought that he would start um, uh, uh, trying to draw some horses. And his father looked at his work and he said, son, you need to focus on drawing what you know, mm. <laughs> which kind of took him off the path. Um, he, he did become a commercial artist, but you know, talking about uh, uh, working on the, the horse with the musculature, how long did it take you to really get familiar with uh, working with with animals of that of that style and and creating um, uh, workable images from those? Uh, well, still learning, but you know it's a never ending process. Um, the, it, my training, I think, uh, is has really helped me there. The understanding how to how to render form and the subtlety of forms can translate well. Uh, into horses, even though they, they, obviously their anatomy is slightly different, um, uh, I'm able to, to sort of, you know, feel my way around that uh, particularly well. But, you know, then I, anytime I have a question, I'll go and I'll, I'll consult diagrams of the horse skeleton and, their, and the way the particular muscles will attach and things like that. Um, uh, but they're, they're absolutely amazing creatures. And, and you know, I, and I've long admired horse paintings. Uh, even if I hadn't realized that there were the, you know, the Western ones, obviously the, the horse figures prominently in, in many European paintings, whether it's, you know, uh, Napoleonic battle scenes. Uh, one of my favorite artists actually um, is this guy named Ernest Messonnier. He was an incredible equestrian painter. I mean, he just, he could paint the horse like nobody else. And this was, this was, you know, pre-photographic time too. So he was, he would make these, these incredible action scenes um before you the, the camera was actually fast enough to capture how a horse was running um so anyway that's a little aside but well that's uh, that's about our time josh uh thank you so much for joining us here we'll look forward to seeing you at the at the masters of the american west in 2023 and um good luck to you my friend well it's my pleasure thanks jim yeah i can't wait for the next show okay thanks